in this video, uh, I'm going to show you how you can use several segmentation methods in ImageJ to, uh, to identify objects in images, to segment um, objects of interest. So we're going to use this image first, so with nuclei, and we're going to start with the most common ways to do it, which is to use a, a threshold. So image uh, j so fiji comes with a very nice feature which is an option to try many different methods at, at once so we're going to try uh, this if you go to image adjust and auto threshold or oh, and before doing sorry before doing threshold should always filter your image so we're going to use a median filter to get rid of the noise or at least a little bit, so the thresholding is not going to be too dependent on the noise. Now we can try it, so if we go to image adjust auto threshold, now we can try all, which is all the methods that are, uh, all thresholding methods that are uh, included with Fiji, and now you can see the results. So you have methods like, like those two, where every single pixel is part of the object component, then you have methods like this one, or particularly this one, where most of the pixels are part of the background here, only one nucleus is part of the object component, and then you have uh, many other methods in between. So we know that the, at the top of the image we have nuclei that we want to identify, so we can look at this particular region, see when we have them, so here we have them, but we see that we are segmenting way too many pixels. Uh, I would say that this one looks uh, pretty fine, so if you want to know which method it is, you uh, zoom in at the bottom, and here we can see that it's the Huang method, so we can uh, close this image, and then you can either um, uh, do the same thing, so image adjust and auto threshold and select the method you want, or you can use the usual tool, which is a threshold, and you see here you have all the methods, and it's actually the Huang that is uh, selected here. So that would be another way you you could also uh, you know try several methods directly like this and see which one you want instead of trying them all. It's just that when you try them all, you can look at all the results at once, and then you can apply it, and you get your results. Okay. Now. Uh, instead of a global threshold that we do here, so we estimate one threshold and all the pixels that have an intensity that is above, above this threshold are a part of the object component, all the other pixels that have an intensity that is below this threshold are part of the background component, you can estimate a local thresholding, so now the threshold is going to depend in the lo on the location in the image. Uh, so let's filter the image again, process filters median, okay, and now you can you have a similar option which is uh, auto local threshold. So as you can see these methods were developed only for 8-bit image, I need to first uh, convert this image to 8-bit and now I can use it, so image adjust auto local threshold and I can try them all, so you see you have parameters, you have one parameter that is related to the local neighborhood that is used to estimate a threshold, and for some method you have one or two additional parameters, let's try them all, and you have a result that is um, an image that is similar to the, the one when you do global thresholding. Now you can see uh, you have uh, this one, two, three, four, five methods uh, for which uh, you have troubles in some region where you have a background area that is large and it's so large that you don't have any nucleus in the in the local neighborhood and that uh, that messes up the, the, the decision that is made for this method. So this one definitely detects uh, everything as uh, object ex except contours. Uh, in this case, I would say that this one looks the most appropriate, which is a fence all car. So if you want to apply it, you use the same uh, process image adjust auto local threshold, but now you select the method you want, which is fence all car, and you get your result. So when you compare to the global thresholding, um, 
you know it depends what you want to do it, it's not much different here we have uh, smaller areas so we would have to separate more nuclei but most of them are easy to separate here so i don't know i i, I guess we would end up with similar results now let's uh, change method and look at a, a scale based method so i'm going to open the image again and i'm going to apply a um, a dog which is the difference of Gaussian so I'm going to filter this image with two uh, Gaussian uh, filters but with different kernels so let's duplicate this image and I'm going to use a Gaussian uh, kernel of size 2 and one of size 10 all right so let's filter the image, process, filters, Gaussian blur, 10. So we see that here we really have very low frequencies of the image. Then if I filter this image, Gaussian blur, 2, we just get rid of the high frequencies. Now if I uh, compute the difference, I'm going to use a process image calculator. GB2 minus GB10, 32-bit, very important because we're going to have negative values. And this is the result. So maybe different uh, size of filters would have been more appropriate. But uh, this, this work, I cannot, okay, I don't know why I'm going to do it that way. And when you look at this, it might be easier to uh, threshold this image than uh, to threshold the original image. If we use the threshold tool, adjust, image adjust threshold. Here we have a, 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 a huge peak, so we know that if we go right after the peak, the peak corresponds to the uh, background so here you see if if you segment uh, so if you threshold right after the peak you get a nice um, nice masks the good thing is that you get all the nuclei even the ones that have a low intensity and that's uh, the, the advantage of using a uh, a scale based method scale based approach um, as we saw last week, we could also use a bandpass filter with an FFT, and it's very fast to do. Process FFT bandpass filter. Let's use the default parameters. We could adjust that, but um, as you can see, that's that's the result. It's it's pretty neat as well. When you look at the at the histogram again, we have a huge peak. So if we threshold this. Uh, right after the threshold uh, sorry I'm gonna do this that looks pretty nice too we have spurious pixels just right after and if we compare those two results I guess they are pretty similar uh, yes pretty similar not the same uh, here it, it looks like it's going to be easier to separate like those two and, and here maybe but uh, and maybe here we have two nuclei it wouldn't be possible to separate them but it's 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 fairly similar all right now let's uh, move on to the level set approach so thing is that um Fiji doesn't come with level sets, uh, and uh, so we're going to have to download it. So uh, there's a um, there's a plugin uh, that is a IJ Toolkit. IJ plugin, let me just go back. IJ Toolkit, if we look for it, you see we can find it, and that's a plugin that has uh, several things including um, so growing tool with level sets and the k-min clustering and we're going to try the k-min clustering then for a different image uh, so we'll be able to use it with this so we download the so we go to the latest version and then select it and now it's going to download it all right so it's done 
let's open the download we're gonna unzip it all right and now if we go into it we see so this is the plugin we want ijp toolkit so i'm gonna copy and paste it in the plugin folder of Fiji. So if I go in Fiji, if I open plugins, I'm going to paste it. And, uh, and now, so I have to um, restart Fiji. So let's close it, open it again. And um, if I go in plugin and segmentation, now I have a level set, I all have also have the K-means clustering. So let's try the same nuclei image and use the level set. So I'm gonna adjust it again, brightness. All right, so with the level set, the way it works is that you define a region and you can either uh, grow region or you go so to the outside or go to the inside. So let's say I want to segment this nucleus. I can define a rectangle. I could use a novel uh, surrounding this nucleus. And then, so I go to plugins, segmentation, level sets. So I don't want to use the, the fast matching, but the level sets. Uh, now, in the parameters, so the curvature, uh, it controls how fast um, the, the, the algorithm goes, so I need to go a little faster, so I, I decrease it. Grayscale tolerance, so when uh, between two iterations you have a, a difference of intensity that is larger than this tolerance, uh, then it's going to penalize the, the, um, the level set. So uh, here, as it's a 12-bit image, uh, 30 is not uh, that large. I'm going to push it to, I think, 100 or 150. I think 100 is fine. And then the convergence, I need to uh, decrease it a little bit. So it's going to converge a little bit later. So for this nucleus, it would be fine for with this value. But when I do the entire image, uh, I need to decrease it. All right, let's try it. Oh, and I forgot something. So, okay, now it's doing. Uh, so I want it to go inside. So you see, I missed it because I went outside. So the level set, instead of, of uh, going from the rectangle to the nucleus, it went from the rectangle to the outside. Uh, now, as you can see, it seems to do a pretty decent job. So we're just going to see what it gives. Uh, so I'm going to, uh, it takes some time, especially at the end when it converges. So I'm going to uh, speed up the video now so you don't have to wait for the entire process. All right, so um, it's down now. So you see it worked pretty fine uh, if we... Um, so these are the masks. We can also look at the results on this image. What we can see is that we missed this one and it's because we started from outside so we couldn't get it. And at the end it had it had a, a hard time to uh, segment this one. So um, that's not what I intended to do. I just wanted to segment this one. So we're going to see that and then we'll try to segment this, see if we can um, make it. So let's keep this. So now you see, when we do mistake, we uh, also see other things. So that's the thing I, I, did, I, I, I forgot to change. Region expands to outside, so that's why it went outside from the rectangle. If I uh, choose inside, now you're going to see. Yeah, so it's, it's pretty fast and it just segmented the nucleus. So one way would be to segment every single nucleus independently like this and then combine the mask but it would be very uh, very uh, time consuming so now you know we saw that we were able to segment everything except this area so let's just try to segment um, this area only Like this, we're going to go inside. So let's do the same thing. Segmentation level sets. 
and and now it seems to work uh, better. So I guess when you have a cluttered nucleus, nuclei like this, and you come from here, it's hard. It's it's probably better to start from the outside here to segment them. So now if I were to combine this result with this result, I guess it wouldn't be that bad. But you, so you see now just it goes a little further. So that's that's kind of a problem. Um, probably the parameterization is not great for a small region and it works better for a larger region so if we want to check maybe we can do one last um, segmentation by uh, starting so defining a rectangle that uh, that uh, ranges the entire image yeah because here you see it's not that great so let's see what it gives uh, if i define a rectangle that way and you see, so level set can be uh, very, very powerful. It was one uh, one method that was heavily used and, and lots of people wanted to use that method because it worked really good like uh, 15 years ago, a decade ago. Now we have other tools. Uh, the problem is that it's, it's, uh, it requires quite some parameterization and, and it can be pretty tricky so it needs practice to understand uh, how to parameterize uh, the algorithm so now uh, I'm gonna again speed up the video so you don't have to wait uh, too long to see the result all right so now it's down as you can see it's it's pretty good um, the good thing also is that when you have uh, several nuclei that are touching it, it looks um, Pretty reasonable to be able to separate them like this one, even this one, with some um, mathematical morphology. Uh, the main problem here is that we are missing the nuclei that have a low intensity. So we could try to enhance the intensity with some method. I don't know. Um, honestly, I'm not an expert uh, with level sets. I never used them for any analysis. And um, and I'm sure that uh, it would be also possible to better parameterize the algorithm to get better results. So let's uh, move on and finish this uh, session with um, the k-means clustering. So we're gonna uh, use a different image. Uh, so this image, uh, which is an image from a, a scalp dermis. And we have uh, several structures in this image. We have hair follicles that are this uh, this shape, so it, it corresponds to the um, the circle, so the disc at, uh, that is orange and red, and surrounding that by um, a structure that is between uh, blue and and pink, I would say. So these are hair follicles. Then you have these pink masses that uh, corresponds to sebaceous glands. Now you have the fat that is in, in white. And finally, you have collagen fibers that are in blue. So uh, you could try to threshold using uh, threshold tools, but the color thresholding in image J is, I think, pretty uh, difficult to use. So you could also try to separate the three different channels and threshold each channel independently, maybe combine them uh, afterwards to define the, to, to identify the structures. Here we're gonna try to use the k-means clustering to see if it um, can identify those different structures. So let's go to plugin segmentation, k-means clustering, and of course with the k-means clustering you need to define the number of clusters, the k. So we have four different structures as I said. Let's try to uh, defined four clusters and see what we get. So if we look at uh, if we look at the overall image, I'm sorry, I have trouble to use yeah, I'm good. Um, if we have another little look, so it seems that the the fat in white here uh, corresponds to these uh, gray areas of an intensity of one and seems to be uh, pretty pretty well identified. Then we have the hair follicles that's, uh, that are a combination of two different colors. 
So intensity of 3 inside, intensity of 2 surrounding, and seems to be pretty well identified as well. Then we have the pink masses that have an intensity of 3. So the pink masses and uh, the inside of her hair follicles um, have the same intensity, so they correspond to the same structure. So that might be the limitation here. And, and finally, we have uh, collagen in black. So if we were to use five uh, clusters, could we separate the pink masses from the inner hair follicles? Let's try it. So sometimes with k-means clustering, you need to define more clusters than what you actually want, and then you can combine those, uh, those clusters together. So if we go to segmentation and k-means clustering, and we define five clusters, Oh, I'm sorry, I run this image. Okay, so it's 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 gonna take a while, but we can we can segment uh the the right image. Uh see if I go to segmentation k means clustering, five clusters. Alright. So if we compare those two results, they look actually they look very similar. The fat is the same intensity. Um, the the collagen is the same. Now uh, the the difference is that the pink masses are uh, gray like this, and now the hair follicles they are a combination of darker gray and 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 uh, lighter gray. So with that, with five clusters, we were able to separate the pink masses, so which are. Uh, the sebaceous glands from the hair follicles. And the hair follicles are just a combination of two different clusters. So as you can see in this particular example, it shows how uh, a k-means clustering uh, can be quite powerful to identify uh, structures in an image.